It is Wednesday, February 18th, 2015. I'm Pamela Stern, and I'm with Michelle La and Cindy Miller in the local 502 Longshore Hall. And we're going to talk to Cindy about how she became a longshoreman. I became a longshoreman um, at the invitation of my uh, common law husband's father, who worked at West Shore for many, many years. And um, my, my, my husband, for all intents and purposes, um, had gone down to the hall when it was in New Westminster and had walked away probably in 1996 or 95, before it came over here. Uh, just, he just, he was a sprinkler fitter at the time and we had lots of work and he wasn't, wasn't, didn't think it was his ball of wax. But his father was persistent and um, when it came time for the big hire through BCIT, um, we got a call that said, get down there, get registered. You know, even if we didn't like it, and I was all worried that I wouldn't be able to do the job. I, you know, pictured big brawny guys and hauling steel around and not being able to do the job and being worried I didn't have the physical strength to do such job. Uh, even though I had been in construction for 10, 20 years before that, um, was still worried. And uh, well, went down, did the test, got through all that, and took the training, and came and hung out in the hall for March of 2003 was when I got my first job and I think I got three jobs that month and um, I was able to do it with relative ease which I was very glad for because I wasn't too young when I started here. <laughs> do you remember what those jobs were? The first one was um, Dockman at the Steel Gate which was a surprise because I came from jobs that paid eight to ten dollars an hour and I sat and played cards with four members probably from eight until ten thirty or eleven o'clock in the morning going don't we have to go and do something yet no 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 you just sit there don't worry about it do steal another hand here come on and Another hour would go by and be like, don't we have to go and do something yet? No, no, just, we'll, we'll, we'll get around to it, don't worry. Those were the few and far between kinds of days, as I discovered later on, where you actually worked your butt off for the entire eight hours that you were on jobs. So it was entertaining to learn that there was going to be days where you could sit and play cards for a couple hours at the beginning of a shift and get paid an exorbitant amount of money for it. It was it was shocking to me. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and how long did it take till you became a member? Uh, you just became a member. Be two years this coming June. Okay. So it took. Eleven years. Okay. Is that about normal for? It seems to be about the norm. Eight to ten. We were told ten when we started. Oh, you'll be a member in ten years. But after a while, you just stop counting the cu the clock and the calendar because oh, they're not going to take any more members, and oh, they're going to put it on hold for a while. And there's so many rumors and innuendos, and you don't know. Oh, you know, if you're you're not in good standing, and my son played a nasty trick on me. Two months before I, I was to become a member, he um, got the boys in dispatch to give him a, a charge slip. And I had been charged once before, pardon me, once before, so I knew what the slip looked like. Yeah. And I'd been to grievance. And to see the slip on my plate, I started crying as soon as I saw it because I didn't know what I had done. And you have to be a casual in good standing. You can't be going to grievance or you can't become a member. Or that's the, the, the rumor fact sort of slash at their own discretion kind of thing. <laughs> but, you know, you, you, you come up the ranks thinking that, yeah, I, I can't be 
caught doing anything wrong. A lot of people just go away for the last month before they become a member just so that nobody can say, oh, you did that wrong, you're getting charged, blah, blah. So I had this slip on my plate, and I take it off, and I'm reading it, and it said, you are charged with um, being blonde and being my mom. And <laughs> I had to read it like three times and then read the signature on the bottom to see that it was my kid. And Mike Mayer posted the picture of me. He took a picture, because I, I, I was like, Mike, look at this. And he took a picture. And it's on the internet. And I'm bright red cheek. My eyes are all glassy. And I have the stupidest smile on my face, like I'm going to kill him. <laughs> yeah, mean child. So. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, so when I when I I had to give the guys in the back a little bit of heck too. Like, how come you giving this you know my son things to torture his mother? It's not very nice of you guys back there. Oh, but it was so funny to see your face. Oh, yeah, thanks guys. So was your was your did your son start longshoring before you? No. No. Okay. No. Did your husband start longshoring before you? No, we both started at the same time. And um, did they? refer you to your name or did they call you your husband's wife? Um, yeah, I was Vern's wife for quite a long time. You were. Um, and then he ended up getting, I put no on my plate for logs and he went off to do more log jobs. I, it cost me severely to not do logs, but um, I was approaching 40 when I came down here and I knew I didn't want to go on the logs, um, namely because I didn't run through the forest as well as I did 20 years before that, so I didn't want to be playing with my legs, and I was watching the girls who, were, who came in before me coming in with sprained ankles, uh, broken <laughs> ankles, broken legs, busted up knees, and I thought, no, <coughs> I don't really want to do that. I went up and pulled chains. Mm -hmm. I could do that, um, but I did a lot of lashing, mm -hmm. and I did a lot of steel, and I did a lot of rail, like a, a dockman on the rail jobs, because uh -huh. they would be. I would say no to the logs, and all of everybody around me would go out and do log ship, and I would be left sitting in the hall waiting for a late call. Yeah. So that's how that played out and as soon as I got away from Vern, Vern was off doing logs. I was still Vern's wife, but um, now I was Miller because mm -hmm. I was usually out at Delta Port. Mm -hmm. And when did you become Ryan's mom? I became Ryan's mom when uh, I would have to say when Ryan, about two years after he got his man number, he was in grade 11, no he was in grade 12 when he got his man number and then uh, in the February eight years ago him and Mike Mayer crashed on the causeway at a hundred kilometers an hour they wrapped a car on the pole there's it's on the his Facebook page the picture of the car and there's so many kids here that know Ryan and have never heard the story and um, the, the two of them were lucky to be alive uh -huh. and I think that was the day I became Ryan's mom because everyone down there at that time knew what had happened. There were several people who drove past the car and thought that he was dead because they had him draped because it was pouring rain on the causeway. So they, when the ambulance pulled him out, they put him onto the gurney and they covered him over so he wasn't getting soaking wet. Well, you get two or three cars going by and the rumors were around Delta Port in half a second and we got called before the ambulance even left the, the accident scene saying, I don't really know what happened, but um, yeah, you might want to call Ryan because I'm pretty sure he's involved somehow. And Mike Mayer answered Ryan's phone and said that, oh yeah, Ryan, he's, 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 he's talking. I'm like, okay, let's just start. <laughs> We're on our way to Vancouver General. Okay. Thanks, Mike. Click. Burn. It's one in the morning. We got to go on a road trip right now because if you're going to Vancouver General from Delta Port, it's not good. Yeah. And 
It wasn't. <laughs> he was hurt pretty bad. Um, <coughs> did you, um, I know you didn't like, you, you don't, you stayed away from logs, but, um, as you started doing more jobs, did you, uh, quickly, um, have a preferred, were there preferred jobs that you liked or? No, not really. No, no. Then? I was, I was happy learning so many different jobs. Um, I've always been prone that way. It's, I'd like to learn a new thing every day. And, you know, I drove malt, tractor trailer, triple trailers, well, since my third year down here. So already 10 years now I've been driving multi, um, learning to drive triple trailers. I say I learn something new every day for the two years that I, for, for sure, every day I worked a shift for the, those two years, I learned something new about that job or about the dock in general or how to, how the ships were loaded, how the yard worked. Um, I still learn stuff. Mm -hmm. And learning down here and being able to pass it on is so important to everyone because there's always sometimes an easier way to do it than the way that somebody else has been doing it. Like Denise explained, they're loading sacks from the beginning to the end isn't exactly the best way. Sometimes the end to the beginning is so much easier. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, and if, yeah. until you get that shown to you, you might be doing it the hard way the whole time. Mm -hmm. So be willing to learn. Mm -hmm. um, what ratings do you have? I have tractor trailer. Okay. And um, how did you? decide or how, how did you happen to get that? Um, working down at Surrey Fraser Docks I got to see a lot of the guys and girls doing lift truck and I thought that wasn't for me because it was very rough on the dock watching them drive back and forth you could see that they were literally like little peas in a tin can dum, 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 down the dock uh, uh, uh. <laughs> and the rail tracks are over here and there's potholes over there and the, and, and Portuguese is laughing because it's just it's true <laughs> it's awful driving just it, the way it be, was before they refixed the dock and made it all nice and flat um, I didn't want to do that and I got the opportunity to go and do Dockman out at Delta Port. They had just made the new side, and the, it was nice to drive on in a pickup truck. And I, you know, got to see the tractor trailers. And there was only 23 of them back then, mm -hmm. so there was very few trucks. And um, I thought, yeah, I, c I could drive one of those. I drive a pickup truck all the time. Like, you know. <laughs> driving a 45 foot trailer should be nothing different you know and it really wasn't honestly mm -hmm. um, I was trained by one of the best God rest his soul um, Mr. Pennell and he uh, taught all the girls on my area in my category or my time frame of hire he taught all the girls how to drive Tom and they actually put a cross on his truck when he passed away to honor him because he did such a marvelous job of training all the, the women mm -hmm. who drive tractor trailer down there. Mm -hmm. any, any girl who's a member right now who drives tractor trailer besides Denise uh, was trained by Tom. Okay. And so we all had the same set of rules and the same set of morals and we knew what the boot at the end of the rail went meant that if you didn't stop, somebody was going to come up behind you with a rubber boot <laughs> and let you have it right in the rear end. And um, and and some of his rules, I I, I sorry to say, don't apply now, um, and they should. Uh -huh. I've been tempted on several occasions to write the Tom Pennell book of how to drive. <laughs> <laughs> You think it's got a little bit more lax? Oh, it's got a lot more lax. It's, yeah. Um, I feel I suffer road rage sometimes out there, but there's over a hundred trucks now. She's quit laughing. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
I go down the back side sometimes of, of my West Shore yeah. fence and I've got both hands up in the air going, <laughs> what the hell are you doing? You know? Uh -huh. um, yeah, but you know what the worst part is? Is that it's worse for Crystal because she can see everything. I know. Yeah, sitting up, sitting up in the There's air, looking no down and wondering what's what's going on the down road. there. Yeah, I can't imagine You're because crazy on the road. Um, I just look yeah, that way. yeah, <laughs> and um, I mean, we were trained. If there wasn't 150 feet between a, to the two gantries and a lid or anything that wasn't stationary and on the ground, you could not turn in between them. <laughs> and now the cranes are like 40 feet apart. And she's like covering her eyes. Yeah, 40 feet apart, and these guys are looping out and cutting in between traffic and hoping that they're going to get out safe. It's, it's. Sometimes it's more than I can bear, and that's why I'm working my way out of that category. I've signed up for checker at Surrey Fraser Docks, which everybody already took, uh, and now have gone moved on to Delta. <laughs> so <laughs> I've had enough of that so place. I'm, gonna, I'm going backwards, yes. <laughs> oh, well. Been there, done that. <laughs> yeah. Seen it all, uh -huh. coming out of it. <laughs> Unscathed at the other end. I still don't because I still have the rating of multi. <laughs> I still have to take it if, it, if yeah, they're short on it. I have to take it. Service your rating. You have to service your rating. I understand that and I appreciate that for what it is. Um, and honestly, it's, it's served me well not coming in with the doctor's note saying, oh, I can't do it anymore um, because um, there's days when that's the only job that there is. And I'm glad to have it. So when I'm able to drop the pin but still take it, that's what's going to be coming for me and hopefully I'll be signed up for checker training, will you know, come my way too. So I'll have a couple options under my belt. I like doing the hatch tender um, at Delta Port. I don't care if I'm down in the hatch all night long, doing twins all night long, and I've done it. Okay, what, okay so I understand what a hatch tender did on the, on the old ships that everything was hand stowed. What does the hatch tender do on these big container ships? Um, we do twin loading. Uh, we're required to be up there. Um, discharge, some guys will say, oh yeah, just stay up at the pop and you know make sure everything's okay when it comes out. I like to go down and make sure that everything is going up okay, just in case there's a stacker that gets left behind and I have to go out and physically remove it off of a can, which I have had to do. Mm -hmm. um, and then for the loading back, the same scenario as you're watching the loads come off the dock back into the hatch and making sure that if it's going to go into a certain cell, whether, whether it's going to have stackers on it, whether it's not going to have stackers on it, whether it's landed properly. Um, some nights I'll talk more on the radio than I really feel comfortable with. And other times I won't have to say anything the whole time I'm down there to, except for the very end. Thanks, Gantry. Good job. So you're 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 on the radio with the person in the in, in, the, in gantry. the gantry. Yeah. Sometimes they like to hear your voice. Sometimes they don't. Do you ever feel nervous with those containers moving overhead? No. No. Why are you laughing? Why are you guys laughing? Because the way you put it, it was funny. <laughs> Um, was it a lie? <laughs> like, no. <laughs> That's what's funny about it. Now, did, did you say your, your father-in-law was a longshoreman? Yes. Yes, okay. And he's the, one that he, he's the one that encouraged you to, you and your husband to do it. To come down here and do it. Okay. And uh, how, many, how many women were longshoring then? Well, there was quite a number by then already. Okay. Um, I don't know how many went in before um, the the BCIT group. Four were in before the ICT, BCIT, okay, so there would be the four and then there was the first group of a hundred uh, people which probably had 20 girls mm -hmm. or so, mm -hmm. 20 out of a hundred. Okay, and that was in anticipation of Delta Port opening? No, no. Uh, Delta Port was well past opened. I think oh. They were probably a little bit behind 
on picking up steam to get the people in because when it's the people who started in the first group in November um, they were working right off the get-go as soon as they walked into the hall the first day that they were registered they were on the road and they were running mm -hmm. and um, those girls are going check in and those girls are going to Surrey and you're gonna drive lift trucks and they had it all they had the jobs coming out that they had to get people mm -hmm. so by the time I rolled into it in in, in March it had slowed down a little bit because November is always even historically now it's it's a, it's the Christmas rush from September to November mm -hmm. and then in January February things kind of mm -hmm. slow down and you breathe and then um, March it starts to pick up for the summer mm -hmm. it goes according to the markets in the world mm -hmm. I mean, it, it all makes sense if you look at the big picture mm -hmm. have you noticed more ships coming up here now that they're having a problem in Yes. It's not so much more ships, different ships. Different ships. Different ah. ships. Ships mm -hmm. that um, you would have never seen here before are, are showing up. Um, I took a hatch tender job a month ago and I was explaining to my supervisor that I had to go into the underground and he was like, you got to do what? Mm -hmm. <laughs> And I had been on ships at Surrey Fraser Docks where you have to physically go through the guts of the ship to get to the holds. But he was a new supervisor and he didn't have a clue what I was talking about. And um, he was calling me on the radio and I couldn't hear him. And how come you weren't answering me? Because I couldn't hear you, dude. You know, I'm in the engine room of a, of a ship. <laughs> You know, and I took pictures to prove it, you know, because <laughs> they're big. I mean, they're like four-story buildings inside of the ship where the yeah. engines are. And yeah. a lot of people don't get the opportunity to see that, yeah. you know. Mm -hmm. um, so you say that you were, you said the BCIT group, does, does that mean that the, that, um, the employers were hiring people from BCIT or recruiting? No, it was... Um, it was a plan that was put together by um, the membership. Yeah, the membership, the executive at the time. They decided that instead of going to the local bar and picking up some more recruits or the hiring process that had happened down here and down in Vancouver um, in the pra in the past, um, that they would have a test. They would have people trained. So they they put um, together a course at BCIT that involved um, three three weeks of training? Yep. Three weeks of training where you were trained in how to operate a lift truck. You were trained in uh, WIMIS. What's that? WIMIS? Uh, WIMIS um, ha hazards. Uh, <coughs> yeah. Um, um, a little bit of, um, how do you word it? Mechanical. Mm -hmm. aptitude of you know if the crane's moving this way how far is the head gonna swing when it's going that way <laughs> just things that you would be aware that if something's moving over here that it might actually hit you if you're way <laughs> over here you know if you couldn't figure that out then you really don't be belong on the dock um, uh, what else were we changing oh we had to we be able English. to English English oh yeah. the test yeah there was an aptitude test there was three aptitude tests there was um, an English test, there was a mathematics test, and there was a mechanical aptitude test. And you had to get a certain score on um, all of those to get down here. And you were given a chance to take it twice if you failed the first time. And out of the 750 people that passed and ended up on T-board, um, I'm guessing there was maybe 300 made it to A-board. Out of all those people, just they, they, we, it's very hard coming up unless you have some kind of support system in place to keep uh -huh. your, you know, if you have a family and you got a mortgage, it's going to be hard, very, very hard to get it, to be able to keep at it down mm -hmm. here just because it's so sporadic, you know, you can't have a month off or three weeks off where you don't work and right. then you get two days. If you had to have a family and a mortgage, it'd be very difficult. Mm -hmm. And it was. There was, it was a good thing for me and Vern that we both had other little part-time jobs that we mm -hmm. could keep ourselves going. Mm 
because mm -hmm. I had two kids, so. Right. And you told me your daughter's a longshoreman up in Stewart, is that? She is. Yeah. She's a casual on B board. Okay. What local is that? 519? I think so, yeah. 519, I believe, yeah. So she's doing logs. She's doing logs, yes. <laughs> and she's got her first aid. Okay. So. And so hopefully they'll be doing steel. The BCIT class, the first type of formal training with the union? Uh, yeah, it, yeah, well, it was, um, you had to be able to drive lift truck. And you, and they did the lashing t training the same as they do here at um, Mitchell Island, where you have to lift up a bar and hook it on all. You didn't have to do anything hooking at that training. You just had to be able to prove you could lift the bar up and touch the ceiling, which was fine. Um, you had to be able to climb up a 40-foot uh, tower. Was it 40 feet, 60 feet? I don't know. It's a fire engine training tower mm -hmm. that they have there. You had to be able to prove you're not afraid of heights. Mm -hmm. um, just things that we, you would use down here, not necessarily every day. It's like longshoremen for dummies. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, if you can do this, you could probably yeah. do that. If you could do this, you could probably do that. You know, lifting up one lashing bar mm -hmm. really doesn't prepare you for anything on a ship. Because considering every can across the bottom has two bars, you know, right off the bat, and then three highs on the ends, so you've got a ship that's 17, 50, say 15 wide, which is a small ship, and so that's 30, possibly 40, 40 bars right off the get-go, mm -hmm. and you're lifting them all, or you're doing turnbuckles and then lifting them and dropping them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's okay. work a sweat. Still home sore? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> I'm over 50 now, and I'm try I'm going back to doing more labor than I've done in 10 years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Do you uh, get to work with your husband? Yep, I do. We're we're close enough on the boards that if we pick if we pick a job together we usually get together. That was a funny thing that you mentioned. That I, <coughs> sorry, but I used to tell them when I got my job, don't put me in the same hat as my as my husband. <laughs> I don't want to work with him. <laughs> and that was the truth. <laughs> See, I don't have that problem because my husband is my fishing partner. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we work well together yeah. and we work well away from work as well as yeah. at work yeah. so yeah. somebody else told me that she, uh, they like working with their spouse yeah. uh, doing one chore and then other people we talked to said they you know they, they it just doesn't happen that they're far enough apart on the yeah on the boards it's, it's probably funny, it's though, personal choice they, they listen to me I was actually shocked. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, I want to ask you the same question I asked Denise about, uh, and I and I know you you've talked about this before, the 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 term longshoremen, and and why that's appropriate to call women who were longshoring longshoremen. Because men started it. I, I don't have a problem um, assimilating to that name. Um, I try and walk a mile in those shoes. Mm -hmm. I mean, sometimes I fall a little short and I feel bad that, you know, I am a woman in a man's field and I know that it's a man's field and I have to play up to that. And, but there's many men standing behind me that I can carry. Mm -hmm in the same job. Okay. Do you feel like you have to work harder than the men? Not anymore. Okay. But you did it first? Yes. Yes. Um, not to the extent of some women we've been discussing lately, um, where I would say, I'll just do the job and you just go sit down. Uh, that never happened with me. I had, because I'd been in construction before I came in here, so I had some knowledge of lazy ass men mm -hmm. um, it was keep up with me or I'll leave you you, know, mm -hmm. you can sit over there and goggle or whatever you want to do uh, 
the men that were around me on the boards. Uh, some of them were, you know, 20, 22 when they started down here. Well, I already got 20 years on you, buddy. You know, you keep up. <laughs> And that kind of blew them away. <laughs> like, holy crap, mm -hmm. she's lashing that whole bay without me. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> uh -huh. okay. Um, oh, I wanted to ask about the education committee and how, in your involvement in it. So, um, My involvement is I'm working on a mural that's going to go across the the, uh, we've discussed it going across the end of the mezzanine now. Um, it's going to hopefully be painted by a, a lady from New Westminster. Um, we're just kind of nailing down how we want to present it, um, whether it's going to include actual pictures, because we seem to have uh, quite a few of them that are for private viewing only and really should be um, for the whole hall to admire and learn from. Um, oh, she didn't. Ideas are popping out of the woodwork. Um, so we're working towards that and um, the other committee members, everybody seems to have their finger into something as far as um, educating the casuals and educating the members too mm -hmm. about where you've been and, and uh, how we got there and where we're going. Mm -hmm. Is so. that an elected post or no. is, so no. is, is it the, Strictly the voluntarily. committee is people who said let's do this? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It was Tim Farrell's baby that he kind of got started. Yeah, Tim. 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 Ah, uh, no, it was Johnny. Actually, the late Johnny Canuck. Was it Johnny? Yeah, he was the one who grabbed me and said, "We're going to start an educational committee. Come on upstairs," and literally dragged me from downstairs upstairs. <laughs> oh. So. Okay. Would you want to be on the executive? Not yet. No. But you could imagine it? Yeah. Okay. okay. Have there been, um, since you've been long sharing, have there been female executives? Yes. Yeah. There are now. Yeah. It's a new thing. Um, it'll progress slowly because, um, I've been an elected official before in a, in a different capacity, and I held my post as a president for um, three years. So I know my Roberts rules. I know what these girls face when they come up here. Is um, we kind of want to hear what you have to say, but maybe you know just make it short and sweet. And if we don't like what you say, then pretty much it's going to be swept under the rug. We, uh, pff, what do you know? Um, I see that at our general meetings too, though. I mean, I see um, girls that stand up to say something, and I see them getting heckled. <laughs> it's like, are oh, you got to be kidding me, gentlemen? Please. Um, everyone who stands up at the microphone deserves to be heard. Mm -hmm. And as things go along. They're going to find that the ladies have something to say, and it might be applicable. And that's going to, you know, when those, when those days do come, um, we'll have the equality that I think that Denise was talking about, mm -hmm. when things are a little bit more equal footing, that mm -hmm. they'll have to listen. They don't have to listen to us. They'll never have to listen to us, because, mm -hmm. I mean, they'll be like being married or something. <laughs> um, we will be on the same we page. We will be on the same page. Mm -hmm. Is there a women's committee um, that, that kind of deals with issues? No? Should there be? That all depends on who you ask. I think it's fine the way it is because it's mixed <coughs> men and women mm -hmm. for the disciplining and everything. I don't think it should change. Okay. Because you get it from both sides. Mm -hmm. It shouldn't be just women on this side, men on this side. No, together. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's the way it should always I be. I think um, when we need to have a woman's group, we're only a call away for the person who would like to get us all together. Um, 
Sure. Like when we all went down to the BC Maritime and put um, education center for a women's um, Against women's against yeah women against violence in the workplace um, it wouldn't be a spot where you'd want to drag any men because there was enough feminist type people all union mm -hmm. bus drivers nurses um, police longshoremen all women from the unions meeting in the same place to discuss um, if you get beaten up at home, do you bring that to the workplace? Well, there's a lot, there, I can't really honestly say that I would bring any man from here that I, you know, they wouldn't want to be there because mm -hmm. you, they would have been the minority mm -hmm. and it may, would have made them feel uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. And if you feel uncomfortable, you're not getting the most out of the situation, especially when you have guest mm -hmm. speakers and you'd be surrounded by mm -hmm. all kinds of women that are going, well, you shouldn't be here because, you know, it's caused by men, blah, blah, blah. That, that you, you don't wouldn't want to expose them to that. But what the group that we went with pulled out of it was totally beneficial, um, made us more aware of what to look for in our co-working women, like, mm -hmm. and, and, it makes, and it makes us able to talk to the men that we work with and make them more aware mm -hmm. of, hey, don't be yelling at her and calling her any nasty names because she's really going to just crack. <laughs> she can't, you know, mm -hmm. she's already, you know, just, you know, be cool. Mm -hmm. And um, anytime you can display um, not so much a sympathetic side, but a, a tolerance mm -hmm. for someone who might be not having the life of, of luxury and dreams that they thought they were going to have. Mm -hmm. It's a good thing. Okay. Um, what do you like about Longshore? Um, learning. Learning things all the time. Um, the ability to engage in my other passions. Uh, relaxing, fishing, getting out of town. Um, just enjoying life, it enables you to do what you want. You could, you can go out and have, you could go to school if you wanted to, you could still be working if you wanted to get a doctorate and be a brain surgeon and be a longshoreman at the same time, you could do that. Um, I was laughing because Vivian and George from California. She's uh, the published. She's the publisher of a scathing re reply to Mr. Rory from Cairo Radio, and her reply to his calling us all thieves and tyrants, and we were all we're all bad people according to this guy's uh, report from Cairo Radio that we shut down the port in Seattle. Best response. And she did. She she's a actual. She's she's a professor at the. Uh, I think it was the long. Uh, what is it? She's um. Is it's L. A. University. Oh, she's okay. a professor, uh -huh. and she's a longshoreman. Oh. So she was in the perfect category to write a scathing response to. Uh -huh. Yeah, or bad publicity. It, or was she the wife of? No, she's. She was too. She's a longshoreman. Mm -hmm. But she's also a professor of publications. <laughs> Pretty cool. Yeah. I mean, what don't you like about longshoring? What don't I like about the longshoring? Um, me getting old. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I know, I know. But the 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 ability to keep up. Um, that's my only fear, really. Is as I grow older and I'm going backwards in my profession. Um, will I be able to do it in another mm -hmm. 10 years? Uh -huh. You know? Okay. What uh, was it like when you were, kind of, when Kate came over? Um, satisfying. Satisfying. Um, can't say that everyone's like, oh, you're gonna, you know, it's gonna be so great. And it really didn't change much for me as far as um, my category. Um, 
I was still behind all the people that I'd been with since I started driving out there. Um, I was able to pick hatch tender jobs a little bit better and then get to see a little bit more of how things uh, run inside the union than you do when you're casual. Mm -hmm. um, but not much. I haven't really delved into it. If you really want to, you can. Mm -hmm. But no, I'll Tim can content to sit back and watch. Uh, yeah, yeah. We volunteered for a few of the barbecues, and I'm on the open house committee for when the new kids come into the hall and put my two cents worth in there if I can. So, so these are these the new the new casuals? The new casuals, yeah, because yeah, we felt that there was a need, and it's part of the educational committee too, um, to give them a heads up of what they were getting into. Because there really is nothing before that. Like you would show up, you would get a job, you had no idea where you were going or what you were going to do when you got there or what was expected of you. And now with the busyness of the port, if you're not kind of instructed on what to look out for, like you really don't want to start walking around out in the parking lot at quarter to eight when all the multis are, you got a hundred trucks that are going in different directions all at the same time, literally, you, from, you know, 10 to eight till, or not 10 to eight, but at eight o'clock until five after. A hundred vehicles, 40 feet long, some of them with cans on, some of them without, and they're going in a hundred different directions. Not a good place to be walking around. Mm -hmm. um, but that was something that they had to take into account too. They had to get a bunny bus to put guys who were going to the ship because we used to walk from the lunchroom mm -hmm. out and that had to come to an end and it did. Mm -hmm. um, but things like that, the education committee is going to help that. Um, what else can we do to keep people safe on the job? Well, we can tell them um, that they need to go here and they need to have a hard hat and they need to keep gloves and if it's minus you know three or four degrees you might want to have hand warmers inside your gloves if you're handling stackers all night because they are freezing cold mm -hmm. um, just little things that you might not even think about mm -hmm. and um, is there anything mm -hmm. that we should have asked you that we didn't not that I can think of, no. Stories, <laughs> memories. Um, lots. <laughs> lots of stories. Um, when Tom Pennell retired, he took his multi outside of the dock <laughs> and went for a, a drive in his tractor trailer, which caused chaos on the dock because he's now gone AWOL with a machine <laughs> that only goes 20 miles an hour. <laughs> and he I took don't a, remember though. <laughs> took it for a little spin. Yeah, no, there's lots of stories. Um, I've been underneath machinery that's broken or I've seen, I've seen lids almost spin around behind a gantry because something went wrong up above and the, can, this, the lid is now spinning back and forth, back and forth, and it's spinning more and more and more. And I know that if it actually gets to the point where it's actually spun right around, that it's going to come down. And I drove really, really far out of the way that day to get to where I had to go to because I didn't even want to be close if it decided What's to spin. Lid? A lid coming off a ship where the hatch co the hatch oh, covers. Oh, okay. Yeah, so it's something that weighs what? 30, 40 tons? Okay. <coughs> 30 tons? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So when it's doing back and forth and back and forth and it's going further and further every time, yeah, it wasn't going to be long till it was going to spin and luckily the guy driving was able to get it down to the ground and literally skid it to a stop. Yeah. So. Do you have any interactions with the sailors? I had one who wanted me to get him some rabbits. 
Uh, he wanted to make gloves out of them. <laughs> Uh, well, you go up country like oh, two hours, you yes. can buy skins. Oh, yeah. Okay. You don't have to go and kill Bambi or kill Thumper. Yeah. So. Where was, where, was, where was he from? Korea, I believe. Yeah, I believe he was from Korea. And he, he had somebody who wanted to make rabbit skin gloves. And they could, knew he could get them over here. Well, yeah, you can. Not, they're not, not around here, really. But you know, yeah, I know where you can get them. <laughs> When's your ship coming back? <laughs> Two months. Okay. Because yeah, the ships aren't in dock very long anymore, are they? Depends. Um, yeah, three, four days, some of them. Okay. Yeah. But then, if the way it's been going, you don't might not see the same ship back here for months. Yeah. Um, they're sending different ships now, right. so. Yeah. Okay, I don't think, I think that does it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thanks, Cindy. Thank you.